Hello, Gold here, and today we're going to have another AVB basic programming video. The goal of this series is to cover every all of the basic features, and then we'll move into building a cell and incrementing or implementing new devices into this work cell on the simulator and creating various processes. But I want to create a series first that goes through all of the different options of the Teach Pendant. So today we're going to look at what's called incremental motion. Incremental motion is a way that I can limit the robot's motion to a specified value. It gives me the ability to engage the dead man and tap the joystick and make the robot move a precise distance. If, for example, I needed to modify a position by, say, 1.4 millimeters, well, that's going to be pretty hard for me to just look at and get exactly right. But with using the incremental features, then we can get those precise distances, both in angular values from the joints, in linear motion with millimeters, and in our reorientation of the tool itself in also angular degrees. So let's look at where these settings are and let's look at how they work. Increments can be easily turned on or off by pressing this shortcut key here. If I press this key, notice down here on my quick set menu, it shows me that my increments are turned off. And with these increments turned off, then when I engage the dead man and I jog the robot, I get freedom of motion. No restrictions, no limits, unless of course I hit a software limit or a workspace limit or something to that effect. But I get free range of motion with the robot in all directions. My motion is not restricted. But when I turn the increments on, it restricts my motion to a degree. And we're going to look at how this works and we're going to test it out. I can change my increment settings by hitting my quick set menu and looking at the second option down here. This is the sign or symbol, I should say, for your increments or incremental motion. When I select it, it's going to give me five options to choose from. None, no increments, which is what we see here. Free motion, free range of motion. I can jog the robot and I'm not worried about it stopping on its own. We can choose small increments. And when we choose small increments, then we'll see in our value screen. Now this value screen does not always pop up. It normally is going to pop up like this and you hit the show values button and it will show you the values for your small incremental motions. In this case with small incremental turn in this case with small incremental motions turned on, we see that if I'm in axis mode, then the robot is going to move 0 0.00573 degrees coming to a complete stop. And then that distance again coming to a complete stop. The same as if I were in linear motion here. When I use a linear jogging mode, my world, my base, my tool coordinate systems, then this limits the motion to 0 0.05 millimeters. That doesn't mean the robot's only going to move 0 0.05 millimeters. On older models, this would be true, but not on newer models. What this does is it breaks up my motion into 0 0.05 millimeter motions, meaning it's going to speed up and come to a complete stop at exactly 0 0.05 millimeters, then speed up again, come to a complete stop at 0 0.05, speed up, come to a complete stop at 0 0.05. So let's look at this in action here. I've got it turned on, so now if I try to jog the robot vertically, then what I'm going to see is it really doesn't look like it's moving, but if we look close enough, we can see it's barely barely moving and the reason is it's having to speed up come to a complete stop at every 0 0.05 millimeter distance so this looks to me like the robot's not moving at all but as I stare at it long enough I can see it is it is moving very slowly now this one is probably one that we're not going to use as often as the medium or large or user defined increments and I'll show you why with the medium increments we see our degree or angular values. Now these can also be changed to be viewed in radians as you can see here. For these purposes we will just stick with degrees and I'm going to stick with the linear motion. It makes it easier to see on the simulator here. Now remember how slow it moved in small. I'm not changing my velocities any, my jog speed, nothing has changed except for my increments. Now I'm on medium increments. Now, as on medium increments, I'm going to try to jog the robot vertically again. And now we're starting to see some motion here. Notice how it's jerking. It's moving. What it's doing is it's speeding up, slowing down, stopping at one millimeter. Speeding up, slowing down, stopping at one millimeter. And it's continuously doing that. Now, here's the benefit to that. 
If I needed to move the robot exactly one millimeter, I'm going to engage the dead man on the pendant or the enabling device and tap my joystick. Now, by tapping my joystick, whichever direction I tap it in, I get an exact one millimeter motion. So it's a way for us to move a precise distance. Let's look at large now. Large jumps up quite a bit, as we can see with our values here. And these are the radian values. But we're going to stick with linear. Now I have five millimeters of motion. Let's look at it again, five millimeters of motion here before it comes to a complete stop. So this is a little more noticeable, especially on the simulator, and in real life it's more noticeable too. So now when I engage the dead man and I press my joystick, notice how it's moving faster, and that's because it can travel a longer distance without having to stop. With the small and medium, it's stopping at one millimeter or less. Every millimeter or 0 0.05 in small is coming to a complete stop and then having to reaccelerate and come to a complete stop again. Here it gets exactly five millimeters before it comes to a complete stop. And we can see that with what appears to be like a jerking type of motion, as we can see there. Now the benefit to this is if I had a position right here that I had taught in space and I needed to move the robot exactly five millimeters, then I can turn my increments on here. I could turn my increments on large, like I have them here, and I just simply engage the dead man and tap my joystick. And the robot moves exactly five millimeters. I don't have to keep it pressed. If I keep it pressed, it's gonna go five, then five more, then five more. So I just wanna barely tap it, five millimeters. Barely tap it again, five millimeters. Barely tap it again, five millimeters. So even though I barely tap the joystick, the robot is going to go five millimeters. So I don't have to worry about tapping it too lightly. As long as I tap the joystick in the direction I want to go, it will travel that exact five millimeter distance. Now, if I need to set a precise distance, if I need to modify a position by one, or let's go with a bigger number, 3.4 millimeters. I'm going to say 3.4 millimeters here, and I'm going to hit OK. So now, by using user defined values, I'm able to change these. I could have even went up here and I could have changed my degrees. Now notice you have a very small bit of rotation there. And you know, it seems like more often than not, our work is done in linear mode, especially when we're teaching programs and such. The reorientation comes into play too also, but it's a lot easier to determine my values in linear mode. We will look at the other modes later. So now that I've set this for 3.4 millimeters, all I have to worry about at this point in time is tapping my joystick and my robot just moved exactly 3.4 millimeters. Tap it again, another 3.4. Tap it again, another 3.4. Now if I turn my increments off by using my shortcut key, press it. Now notice you get the full, nice, smooth motion. It's not interrupted, it's not stopping every few millimeters. I'm getting good, smooth motion. Get back up here. Good motion out that robot. Now if I turn them back on, notice when I turned them back on with my shortcut key that it goes back to the exact same setting I had. It's still at 3.4, it went right back to user defined. If I hit it again, turns it off. If I hit it again, puts it right back where I had it. Now if I go to medium, I'm gonna turn it off. I'm gonna hit it again, and it's back on medium. So whatever your previous setting was, it will return to that previous setting when you use your shortcut key. This is a very handy feature when making small changes to small parts of a program. If I had to make changes to multiple parts of a program or multiple lines of code at one time, there's another option and that is called our hot edit, which we will focus on in the upcoming videos. So. Uh, make sure to throw a like and subscribe and uh, share the video if you can. Uh, the more subscribers I get, the more of these I get to put out. So hopefully uh, people enjoy them. I want to make sure everybody enjoys them, that they help people out. So leave in the uh, comments section some videos you would like me to make, some subjects you would like me to cover, at least as far as the basic areas of the Teach Pendant Go right now. And we're going to get into writing programs and making changes into those programs very soon. So thanks a lot for watching. For now, Gold out.